1. A long time ago, I used to work in an educational toy store in my local mall. After it closed down, I had to find new places to shop for the kids in my life. I had gotten a nephew of mine started on a Scalewood Thomas the Train toy line. When someone I knew told me Barnes & Noble had started carrying the line. So I decided to swing by to see what new pieces had come out for the holidays. Once there, I started looking over and hear two women talking about if they should get their kids started, because both kids loved Thomas the Train. Before I could stop myself, I had introduced myself, and when I mentioned the store I had worked at, they both lit up, suddenly remembering they had seen me there. Now they're asking questions, and I'm giving advice. By the time they are done, more people have started asking me questions. Before I know it, I'm standing in about the same spot for more than an hour just selling the heck out of these trains. When the crowd finally dispersed, I made sure I have the two pieces I wanted and start to head to the register, only to find the department manager the store manager standing there along with the girl actually working the kids' section staring at me. At that point, realizing the spectacle I had unintentionally created, I walk over expecting to apologize, only to have the store manager talking before me. Do you realize how much of that stuff you sold? So that guy did buy the roundhouse set. So you know, that set was, at the time, their biggest set and cost $500. Actually he did, but I'm talking about more than that. You have sold more Thomas the Train items than we have ever sold. Unable to stop myself, I replied, Wow, you haven't carried the line that long? Once your people learn about it, I'm sure you'll have better numbers. Do you want a job as assistant manager in this department? Then the department manager adds, More than half those people thought you already worked here. They wanted you to get a raise. And the employee says, I don't understand how you knew all that. I could barely follow half of it. <laughs> Thanks. How much would it pay? I turned down the job. It was offering less money than my job at the time. I ended up being given the employee discount on the two pieces I wanted as a thank you. For about two years, every time I went into that Barnes & Noble, I would see one of the managers from that day, and they would ask me if I needed any more train items. 2. I work at a soap store. During the intense COVID months last summer, we were only open for curbside pickup or if you approached the entrance and knew exactly what you wanted, we would grab the items for you and use a mobile point of sale for quick checkout. You could not come inside the store, and we tried to maintain a strict six-foot distance from all customers. It was very slow, and we barely had any customers, let alone had anything interesting happen. One day the phone rings and I jump at the chance to answer it, because I was that bored. The person calling sounds like an older woman, and she asks me if I could help her with a product recommendation, and I say sure. This is how the rest of that phone call went. I bought this bar of soap for my husband, and it's not from your store, but it is irritating his skin. I was wondering if you guys would have something really similar, but with gentler ingredients that won't irritate him. I'm sure we can find something, we have a lot of options. Can you describe the smell or what it feels like? Is it more exfoliating or moisturizing? I have no idea how to describe it. I wouldn't even know what words to use. Does it smell citrusy, like lemon or orange? Can you tell me some of the ingredients? I have no clue. He's used it up mostly, so I can't tell. Okay. It would be easier if you guys could give it a sniff and see for yourselves. Can I bring it over? Ma'am, it would not be the safest for employees to smell or make physical contact with something in your husband's personal possession right now. Or ever. But maybe we can find another solution. If you have a picture or bring it safely contained the next time you stop by, we might be able to find something similar that works for you. Honestly, I was just trying to say anything to end the conversation. I wasn't expecting her to actually still come. Okay, I will come by soon and you guys can figure it out. Bye! Later that day, this middle-aged white woman comes to the door holding something wrapped in paper towels in her hand. I knew immediately who it was. Hi, I spoke with someone on the phone about a soap I have, and I want to know if you have something that smells similar. She unwraps a small chunk of tan-colored soap onto the table and makeshift barricade in front of my co-worker and I, and looks at us expectantly. It definitely looks well used. Ma'am, like we said, we are not willing to smell your soap. But we would be happy to recommend something to you if you can give us more detail. We can compare it to some of ours. It kind of looks like this one. I don't know how I thought you guys were experts. That's your job. I was told on the phone that there would be someone competent who could help me. My co-worker says, 
We are not going to smell your soap because, frankly, we don't know where it's been. Great. I drove all the way here because you said you would. No, I said we were open to finding another solution. So I don't think there is any way we can help you. She storms away, still not comprehending the ridiculousness of her original request. Me and my co-worker have something funny to laugh about. And for the first time that summer, I couldn't say I was bored. Side note. We were advised by the company during COVID to not accept returns, reusable bags, or in any way make physical contact with anything that has been in a customer's personal possession. I know that soaps can carry COVID, but that's not the point. 3. I went clothes shopping today. The dressing room had a six item limit, and I had more than six things to try on, so left some with the dressing room clerk at the desk. I folded up the things I tried on, that I wasn't buying, and brought them to the clerk and exchanged them for new items. As I was doing this, a woman tapped me on the shoulder saying, Hey, hey, carry these in here, please. I guess assuming I was a clerk too. Well, I don't work here. Sure you do. I just saw you folding clothes. I was returning those items. I'm in a hurry here. Excuse me. As I walked off, because I didn't have time to get into it with her and try on everything I needed to, Hey! She followed me. Thankfully, the desk clerk saw her and went over to help her, so she left me be. I went into the changing room, put on an outfit, and stepped out to see it in the full-length mirror. Bear in mind I had changed my clothes at this point. I don't know how this didn't make it clear that I was shopping. But she asked, Can you get this for me in a smaller size? I pretended not to hear her and rushed back into my dressing room to avoid the confrontation. Apparently, I was in such a hurry that I did not properly latch the door. Because sliding the dress over my head, tits flopped out in the breeze, this woman follows after me and opens the door. I take the dress off and see her staring mouth agape and she just says, You really don't work here, do you? Stunned but mostly irritated, I reply, Would I be naked if I worked here? She walked away. I shut the door and finished up. When I come out to give my next round of items to the clerk, the woman was waiting for me. She apologized over and over and said she'd been on autopilot all day. I told her not to worry about it and I hoped she enjoyed the show. I wonder what the clerk thought happened. 4. We had our second lockdown which lasted around three months and during that time they were still working. Our click and collect service got a big notch up and went from around 70 orders a week to 1,000 a day. We tried different methods to make it run smoothly and in the end came up with a very effective way to make it easier for us and the customers. Instead of getting all orders down to ground level, we had a little space for storage. We opened the doors at our exit where one or two employees would welcome the customers outside and hand out their orders while others were scanning orders and picking up the orders to give to the two handling them to the customers. One day, I spotted a customer on his way into the store, while my colleagues were busy talking to another customer. First, I thought that something had dropped off his order, as he was walking in with a cart filled with things. I approached him and told him that he couldn't enter the store as it was closed. He looked confused and asked why the others got their items, if they hadn't been shopping in the store. That confused me for a second, but I told him that they got their items through the click and collect service and we handed it to them. He huffed and said he wasn't here to collect anything, but return some items. This is roughly our conversation. I'm sorry, but we're closed, which means you can't return anything. You have to wait until the store is allowed to open again. I'm here now, so why can't you just take it back and give me my money? We're not allowed to do so. You're not allowed to even get into the store, so please leave. I'm sorry that we can't help you now, but once we're open again, we'll be happy to help you return your items. Until then, please be patient. I want you to return my items now. I'm here, so what's the problem? The registers are just over there and I don't need cash, just transfer it to my credit card. At this point, I'm sighing inwards, not really wanting to deal with this man. Fortunately, our team leader has noticed that I was talking to a customer with a cart and she came over, asking what was the problem. I want to return my items. Now. That's not possible right now. You'll have to wait until we're allowed to open the store again. I can't wait for that and I'm here. I can't see what the problem is. The problem is that it's not legal for us to do so right now and we can get a fine if we give in to your demands. So leave and wait for us to open again. 
BS. You're making this up. We are not allowed to let customers into the store, no matter if they're buying or returning. Please leave now or I'll have to call security. The customer huffs but turns at the threat of security coming. Outside I hear another customer asking what the heck he was thinking, believing that the store was open for return. The annoying customer got shamed by other customers and I and my team leader didn't see any reason to stop them. I went back to work and so did my team leader. To this day, I wonder why it was so hard to understand that we didn't provide that service under lockdown. To make it clear, we're mostly selling furniture and kitchenware. The man wanted to return a bed and a closet and a few other smaller items. Things that aren't easy to return through mail or delivery, as it would cost a small fortune for either us or the customer. I do not work in returns and have very little knowledge of their practice, so I could sadly not provide the man with other options, and he was too determined to get into the store that I didn't feel sure he would stay where he was while I found out if there were other options. We don't have any expiration date on returns. If you buy something online, you have 14 days where you can regret buying it and send it back using a Consumer Contracts Act standard cancellation form, use our cancellation form, call customer service or write us an email. All of this you can find on our website. And that very easily. If you regret and want to return something after those 14 days, you'll have to get to a physical store and return it there. You can always find our opening hours on our website. And before I forget to mention, that he'd bought his items in store just before lockdown, as it was a Christmas gift. I really wanted to help him, but our policy was that it wasn't possible to return items during lockdown, and you had to wait until we were opened. Unless you bought them online, and were within the 14 days window of regretting your purchase. 5. My best friend works in a furniture warehouse, and it's a very chill job. I'm a freelancer whose job is 99% online, so when a shift is slow for my pal, I hang at the furniture warehouse to work on a more comfortable sofa than I'll ever afford, and we chat and whatever. Since I'm in the furniture warehouse a lot, I've come to develop a decent understanding of where things are, and even an opinion of what brands of couches and mattresses I prefer over others. Because I'm sitting working on a laptop, people often mistake me for a store employee. If someone asks a question in earnest, I'll usually try to answer it, but always first stating, well, I don't work here, but... Today was one of those times. I was working and a sweet old lady asked me where to find something. I started to give her directions, but she looked blank, so I just walked her over there, discussing her new easy chair as we walked. She found what she was looking for. Just as I was making an egress back to my nice couch, an annoying woman and her teenage daughter flagged me down. You could just tell she was going to be a handful by how she snapped her fingers to get my attention. Hey, hey, I've been here 20 minutes already. Can I get some service, please? Oh, so I don't work here, but I can go find my friend who actually does. Just because this isn't your section doesn't mean you can't help me. This place isn't that big. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't work here at all. Come on. What, you're going on a break? No, miss, listen, I am not employed by this store. She stared at me blankly then, as though she was experiencing an anthropomorphic 404 does not compute error. Finally, she screeched, Are you going to help me or not? Did you hear anything I just said? Shocked Pikachu face from annoying woman. Oh, this is about to get good. There's a smirk from the teenage daughter. I have been a loyal customer of this chain for decades. Understand something. If you don't help me, you'll never have my business again. Unless you need audiovisual editing done, I didn't have your business to begin with. My friend hears the commotion and comes over. Hey, what can I help you with? Your employee has been very rude to me and my daughter. He, uh, he cursed at us and everything. My daughter heard it, right, sweetie? I shop here all the time, and there isn't a discount big enough to fix this. I need to speak to a manager, or a manager's manager, or something. Yeah, we're big time customers here! You could tell the daughter was enjoying the display. She was a miniature version of her mother, they were even dressed similarly. I didn't bother contradicting them because I didn't even have a job to lose here, and because their delivery just wasn't especially convincing. My friend knows that pretty much the only remains of my Christian upbringing is I still never curse. 
Instinctually, I'll be a gosh golly darn person till I die. So he put together pretty quickly what had happened. An important thing to know. To understand what happens next is that I kind of look like Aaron Paul. My friend and I had just been discussing it earlier in the day because of the Breaking Bad movie El Camino coming out. So he starts comforting the Karen family, but seems distracted. Then after about ten seconds, turns to me and goes, Wait, I knew I recognized you! Oh, sir, oh my god, it's such an honor to meet you. I didn't know what he was doing at this point. Are you talking to him? She turns to me. What? Are you the owner or something? Can I get a photo with you, Mr. Paul? I couldn't believe what he was trying to pull, but I did finally pick up on the gag and started playing along, acting jaded and distant like I figured someone in Hollywood might. All right, but make it quick, okay? I'm just trying to pick out a new couch, and I really don't want a lot of attention. Who are you? Ma'am, are you kidding? This is Aaron Paul! You know, Jesse Pinkman from Baking Bad? From the El Camino movie on Netflix? Ah, no way! <laughs> said the daughter. Oh, but Mr. Paul, sir, did you... Did you curse at my patrons? I guess I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the store. I mean, it's policy if you were bothering people. No, no, not if that happened at all. My mom made that up because she was embarrassed. Can I take a photo with you? I don't really like to do a lot of... Then my friend says... Sure you can, honey. I'll take the photo. Give me your phone. Squeeze in, Mr. Paul. My friend is barely holding it together, but I felt bad looping the teenage daughter into this. But then her mom gets in the photo and puts her arm around me like we're friends. No apology or anything at any point from her. So I didn't feel bad anymore. We took a bunch of photos, then as soon as I had an opportunity, I went home because people were already starting to whisper throughout the store that Aaron Paul was there buying a couch and staring me down. In that short period of time, I already had to sheepishly correct two people who stopped me on my way out. Caught up with my friend a few hours later, and apparently, the woman picked out a single plastic mattress cover, then tried to pay for it in part with an expired coupon, pitched a major fit over the coupon not being accepted, and eventually left without buying anything. And unbeknownst to her, without a photo with Aaron Paul. Hey everybody, Halfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Adventures in Fast Food and Retail, number 124. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Like, really, I've been so... I might be about to get a bit emotional, so I apologize in advance, but... It, it, it's a lot of work, week by week, keeping the channel going. But it's worth it, because it's my channel, it's... it's, it's Forgive the term, but it's my baby, it's my business, it's my passion, so to speak. And I know how much you guys appreciate it, so whenever, like this week, I don't know what happened this week, but I had like six six people contact me, just randomly, whose stories I've used before, saying that you did a story of mine previously, and I thought of you, and I thought you might like to use this one. And like that happens now and again, but I never get that many at once. So I've just been so humbled and grateful this week that by how kind and generous people are. And it also kind of reminds me, um, as you know how I feel about respecting the rights to people's stories, respecting copyright and such, and it kind of drives home that there's really no valid reason not to ask permission beyond the fact that I really like to be able to sleep at night. You're, you're going to make fans and friends and you'll, you'll, you'll find people that become part of your community just by doing that. Uh, anyway, it's just, like I said, I've been feeling very, very grateful this week. Uh, oh, yeah, um, I forgot to do the thing. Uh, if you like the video, then please do uh, click boop, lick. Well, maybe not lick. Um, hmm. Someone suggested a rubber band the other day. I thought that was quite cunning. So do something to, to you know, to make the like button do the thing. Yeah, it's very helpful to me, and possibly leave a comment, and if you haven't subscribed already, uh, hit that subscribe button. It's what all the cool kids are doing, from what I hear. Right, here we are, day two after my COVID, uh, first COVID vaccine. Got the AstraZeneca, I think that's just what they're giving in my age group, if you don't have any pre-existing conditions and such. 
Um, slightly worse feeling today than I was yesterday, but still not too bad overall. Mild flu symptoms, a bit stuffy in the head, really. Nothing that some painkillers don't ease off, so we're, we're not bad there. And I'm going to get this video wrapped up. Then I think I'll be streaming some more No Man's Sky. I'll probably just stream for as long as I'm in the mood to do so until I finish Expeditions, because I'm making some good head headway with it. Um, especially after they messed up the, the previous save, but I'm, I'm getting there. And I'm debating on making a Korma. I'm going to be very bad because I got new sauces I hadn't tried before, which are part of uh, my local, one of my local supermarkets' vegan range, but I'm probably going to make it with chicken, so don't judge me too harshly. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.